How's it going? Adam Drake here, and today I'm going to talk about fuel tank mounting. So I have my Mugen Seeky MBX-8R, and I'm going to show you kind of just how I route my fuel lines, talk a little bit about how tight the fuel tank needs to be uh, secured to the posts. And this can be used for any nitro vehicle. I see from time to time people have problems cracking tanks, and a lot of times it's because they simply tighten down the tank too tight, crush the grommets, and basically hard mount the tank. So those rubber grommets are there to be able to allow the tank to kind of move and also help with vibration. So when you go to refuel the car and you open the lid, those rubber grommets kind of soften the blow or soften that vibration. Sometimes you'll notice when you open the lid, as you start to fuel the tank, as you get close to the top, it wants to splash over. That could be because the engine tune is off or the idle is high, but it also could be because the tank is just mounted too tight uh, to the, the tank posts. So what I like to do is I'll just take and tighten down the screws until it starts to compress the grommet. Now I use a washer, a Flashpoint Blue washer, um, just to kind of give a little bit more support. And as soon as that washer starts to touch, touch and compress the grommet, I'll just feel the tension on the tank and then I'll back it off about a half to one full turn. Check the tank. I'll also try to pull up and down on the tank. Now you want to make sure that the tank isn't just flopping around or that those grommets aren't sliding up and down on the screw. But you do want to make sure that those grommets are not compressed. What will happen is if you tighten down the tank too tight to where those grommets are not doing their job and it's basically hard mounted, when you then have a hard impact, whether it's landing a jump, uh, crashing, hitting another car, and the car flexes, when it's hard mounted, the tank is also going to flex. And the fuel tanks are two pieces that are sonic welded together, and they shouldn't be flexed. So again, they can absorb some impact and move around, but the majority of that impact should go through the rubber grommet. So you want to make sure that the tank is able to rock back and forth freely. Um, again, you don't want it flopping around in the car, but you want to make sure that there's little to no compression on those rubber grommets. And that will allow the chassis to flex, the fuel tank post to flex a little bit without actually flexing the tank and causing it to split at that seam. Another thing with the tank that's really nice now on the MBX-8R is it now comes stock with the 90 degree fitting. I've used this 90 degree fitting for a number of years. It just helps make the fuel line routing a lot cleaner. I also shorten my fuel lines. I don't use the external fuel filter because I feel like the longer the line, the more problems you can potentially have. The more connections in the line, the more problems you can have. So I have the fuel line come out of the 90 degree fitting and straight back into the carburetor. And then the pressure line comes straight out of the tank, loops around the front, along the side, and then straight into uh, the pressure inlet nipple on the, on the pipe. What you will have to do though, if you're gonna use this type of fuel line routing, you can use the stock Mugen clips, but they'll have to be secured uh, with super glue. So if you're gonna do that, you'll wanna use like a nail file or you could probably use Scotch-Brite or sandpaper, but I use just a normal nail file. And I will scuff the tank where I plan to glue um, the fuel line clip and also scuff the backside of the fuel line clip. When you go to glue that down, you'll just need to put one or two drops of glue on the tank, secure the clip, but then make sure you let it sit for at least 15 minutes or so, that way the glue can fully cure. I use the Flashpoint fuel line, which is a little bit thicker than the stock Mugen line. So if you're using the stock Mugen clips, 
before sanding and then gluing them down, I'll just kind of spread them apart a little bit to make sure that the fuel line um, clips in, but without like fully compressing the line. Also with the tank, um, the stock line on the inside works just fine, but the flash point line is a bit more durable. So it's, it's a little bit of a pain, but I'll actually remove the 90 degree fitting, put flash point line on the inside. But when doing that, because the flash point line is a little bit larger diameter, you'll have to either remove the lid or open the lid and then cut maybe two millimeters off the baffling that's inside the tank. That way the line can still move freely. But you will need to be really, really careful to make sure if you change that line that it's the same length as the stock line that you're taking out because it's really, really critical that the clunk sits in the proper location. That way when you go upside down, the clunk is able to go all the way upside down and still draw fuel. So with the way that I route this line, again, it's, it's mainly just to make sure that everything is clean and less chance of they're, they're coming in contact with anything. When it wraps around the backside and goes through the fuel filter, it's close to the air filter and also to the linkage. When it's on this side, it's just really clean. It's away from, from most stuff. And then you also want to make sure always that the fuel line stays uh, as far away as possible from like the clutch belt because you don't want the fuel line to get sucked into there and have a DNF because of that. But just wanted to talk about uh, some of the simple steps that I take just to help make sure that my stuff is durable, my engines stay running consistent, and I have less problems on the track.